In this video, I'm going to talk about histone methylation, acetylation, as well as a little bit about histone deacetylation. Before we jump in, I think it's important to get a little bit of background information. And so that is what this chart over here is for. So the structure of a chromosome, you first have the chromosome. And then once you kind of zoom in a little bit more, you have chromatin and then once you zoom in a little bit more, you have nucleosomes. So essentially nucleosomes are beads on a string. So essentially what they are is it's DNA wrapped around histones. Histones are positively charged and then that makes it easy to bind to negatively charged DNA. Now it's important to note that histone methylation is similar to DNA methylation, but it's not the same. So both DNA methylation and histone methylation will usually cause a reversible transcriptional suppression, but it can also cause activation in certain circumstances. So if you have methylation of an inhibitory gene, this can kind of take away the inhibitory gene to activate something else. However, most of the time when you see this in a test question, they're going to be talking about histone methylation and DNA methylation causing a suppression of transcription. Now let's talk a little bit about acetylation. So you can take a look over here. Acetylation adds acetyl groups to the histones, usually lysine in the histone. So histones are made up of proteins, and the proteins that make up histones are usually positively charged. And one of these positively charged amino acids is lysine. So essentially what happens is, by adding acetyl groups, you make the histone more negative. So then what that does is, it pushes the DNA away from the histone, so the histones aren't grabbing the DNA as tightly. And so this can allow for easier transcription. So if there is acetylation, there is probably also deacetylation. And in this case, deacetylation is just kind of the opposite. So you take away acetyl groups, and then that winds the DNA around the histone more tightly. So it makes it harder to transcribe the gene. And a little fun fact is alteration of gene expression in Huntington disease occurs in part due to deacetylation of histones. Now a little trick that I like to use to remember what acetylation does is I like to think of acetylation as making DNA active and methylation as making DNA mute. So to sum it up, acetylation unwinds the DNA from the histones so you can make mRNA easier or other R types of RNA. And then methylation winds the DNA closer to the histones to make it less likely for it to be transcribed. That pretty much sums it up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to see more content like this.